Welcome to Remote Worship here at John's Creek United Methodist Church. We're so glad that you've joined us. We know that this is a, a great time of meaning and fulfillment for you, and we're glad to offer this for you. We do appreciate uh, you taking time to worship with us. I want to begin with a passage of Scripture from the Gospel of Mark, uh, chapter 4, verses 35 through 41. On that day when evening had come, he said to them, let us go across to the other side. And leaving the crowd behind, they took him with them in the boat, just as he was. Other boats were also with him. A great windstorm arose, and the waves beat into the boat, so that the boat was already being swamped. But he was in the stern, asleep on the cushion. And they woke him up and said to him, Teacher, Do you not care that we are perishing? He woke up and rebuked the wind and said to the sea, Peace, be still. Then the wind ceased and there was a dead calm. He said to them, Why are you afraid? Have you still no faith? And they were filled with great awe and said to one another, Who then is this that even the wind and the sea obey him? May the Lord add his blessing upon this reading of his holy word. Help us to hear it, understand it, believe it, and then live in response to it. Let's be in an attitude of prayer together. Lord, we do thank you for this time of worship that grounds us, that sustains us, that strengthens us by the power of your spirit. I pray for those who are connecting in this way whatever they may be faced with in their life. And Lord, I I pray that you would be with me because you've given me this amazing privilege and responsibility of of preaching your word to these, my friends, and your servants, a task, Lord, that I cannot do on my own strength. So Lord, I ask you to speak to me and through me in such a way that all of us receive a word from you that will make a difference to our lives. It's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. You know, there are some interesting things I've learned about life. One of them is, you know, we human beings have an uncanny way of finding trouble in all kinds of forms. But there's another lesson I've learned the longer I live, and that is trouble has an amazing way of finding us as well. The disciples certainly learned this truth in our scripture lesson for today. They... We're with Jesus around the Sea of Galilee one day as he was teaching, and as evening came, Jesus wanted to go on the other side of the sea in a boat. And so they sailed off in the sunset. It had been a good day, almost. All of a sudden, a windstorm arose and and threw around that boat like a toy, and the disciples were absolutely terrified. You know, it's not uncommon for sudden windstorms to arise around the Sea of Galilee. The combination of the elements in and around the sea have a way of making way for sudden windstorms in life. You know, life has a way of allowing windstorms to arise suddenly. Trouble has a way of sneaking up on us. Have you discovered that? It was a Friday afternoon. I had just finished uh, playing a tennis match. I was in high school, and I had made all these plans with my friends for the weekend. And so I I went home, and I ran upstairs to get ready for uh, the weekend. And before I could get to my room and get changed and all that, my parents called me to their room. And when I walked in, my mom was sitting on the bed, and my dad was sitting in a chair next to the bed taking off his shoes. And I said, tell me, what's going on? I got plans. What's up? My dad looked up at me and said, Charlie, I have cancer. They threw a big retirement party for Bob and his wife. They roasted him. They presented him with all these awards. He had been with the company a very, very long time. It was a great affair. Bob's wife just stood there proud. And they asked him what he was going to do, what they were going to do in retirement. And Bob said they were going to travel. He had worked so hard for so long that they never had uh, an opportunity to take all those trips. So they were going to travel. 
They left that party feeling good. The next day, Bob's wife collapsed and died. They're a nice young family. The parents, they invested their money well. The kids, they went to private school. Everything seemed to be great. And then one day, she called her husband at work and said, have you seen the news? We've lost it all. You say they invested in a guy by the name of Madoff. Trouble rarely announces itself before it comes. Trouble never says, here I come, here I come, get ready. We wish it would. That way we could be prepared for it. Or better yet, we could avoid it altogether. But we all know that's not how life works. In fact, you are one of three people today. You're coming out of trouble. You're in the middle of trouble or you're about to get into trouble. That's how life works. And don't think just because you're a Christian you can avoid trouble. That's not what my Bible says. In fact, Jesus said in this world you will have trouble. Sin runs amok in this world. This world is broken. Therefore, all of us experience trouble of some kind. And since this is a true fact about trouble, One of the things I've learned is that our lives are defined by how we respond to trouble. Think about it. Drug addicts are defined by how they try to numb themselves to the trouble. Criminals are defined by how they act out destructively to trouble in life. Chronic victims are defined by how they exploit the trouble in their life to avoid responsibility. Trouble. You look at a lot of unhealthy people and why they act the way they do, and at the bottom you will find people who act very, very destructively when it comes to trouble in their life. In fact, M. Scott Peck in his classic book, The Road Less Traveled, said that a lot of mental illness can be traced back to one thing, the inability to cope with the pain and the truth of life. And at the bottom of all unhealthy responses to trouble is one word quite often. It's a word that is the enemy to all that brings healing and peace and life and joy. The word is panic. Panic is the feeling of being unprepared. Panic is the feeling of being out of control. Panic is grabbing for anything and everything to feel in control even if it's unhealthy. In our text for today, the disciples panicked. Did you notice? I mean, the, 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 the windstorm was beating them to and fro, and they, they crawled to the stern of the boat in great fear, and there they found Jesus asleep. Jesus, why are you asleep? Don't you care that we're perishing? Does that sound familiar? I don't know what you bring to this service today. I don't know what trouble is in your life. Maybe it's a a business that's failing, maybe it's a a marriage on the rocks, maybe it's living between doctor's visits, I don't know. And maybe it's taking all the self-control you can muster not to scream out, Lord, are you listening? Lord, do you care? Lord, are you asleep? Why is Jesus asleep on the boat? I think that's the One of the key questions of this text. Why is Jesus asleep? It's almost comical, isn't it? They're in the midst of this big storm on a boat and the the, the boat's being rocked like a little toy and there is Jesus asleep. Why? I'll tell you why. Because the Lord never panics. The Lord is in control. Yes, Jesus said, in this world you will have trouble, but then he says, but fear not, I have overcome the world. Our Lord has got the whole world in his hands. In fact, when you look at the text, really, I think Jesus was giving us a model as to how to respond in the midst of trouble. If we knew the Heavenly Father like Jesus knew the Heavenly Father, we would not panic either. And so Jesus, he stands And he calms that raging tempest. And you know what I believe with all my heart, as sure as I stand here, Jesus can do the same for you. I don't care how great your burden is today. I don't care how great your trouble is today. I don't care how dark your life may seem today. 
Jesus Christ can calm the raging tempest inside you. All it requires is one thing. I know people who have this one thing. I've seen it. I saw it one time when I went to visit a lady in her mid-40s in the hospital who was dying of breast cancer. As I walked in, I couldn't believe my eyes. Her friends were throwing her a birthday party. There was a big cake beside her hospital bed. She had a a pink party hat on, and they were listening to Cool and the Gang. Celebrate good times. And I'm looking at this scene going, this is not appropriate. This doesn't seem right. And then I realized it was appropriate because I saw her face. She had it. I remember seeing it in a parishioner in another church I served just about every Sunday. He was a man who lived with chronic pain. The pain he lived with in his life was almost unbearable. But there he was in the front pew every Sunday. And as he stood up to sing a hymn, I would see his hands clench that pew and his knuckles go white. He had it. My dad had it. I would often see it on his face when we would be at meals around the table and he would pray and and I would open one eye to look at him and I would look at his face as he prayed. Oh, oh, he had it. John Wesley had it. It's what he found at Aldersgate and it made all the difference in the world. Moses had it. Abraham had it. Noah had it. David had it. Many of you And this wonderful church have it, and it inspires me. What is it? Well, it's in the text. Jesus demonstrates it. It's faith. You see, Christians are not perfect. Christians are not people who have it all together. Christians are not people who have all the theological answers to all the theological questions. Christians are not people who are better than others. You know what Christians are? Who Christians are? They are people who have learned that Jesus can be trusted. Jesus can be trusted in the midst of a storm. Jesus can be trusted to take whatever trouble you find in life and transforming it into something good. Jesus can be trusted to never leave you or forsake you. Jesus can even be trusted when you die. Jesus can be trusted. The church is a body of believers who believe that Jesus can be trusted. And if we don't believe this, we might as well be somewhere else. You might as well be on the golf course right now. You might as well be doing something else. Because we're just playing church if we don't believe this. You see, the church is not some kind of charity organization. It is not some kind of nonprofit. It is a body of people who live and believe by the great truth that Jesus can be trusted. Do you believe that? Do you? <clears throat> you know, I have a, I know someone who went, to a doctor one time because he was at his wit's end. Life had become unbearable for him. He was in a place where he was overworked and he was away from his friends and family and he was stressed about everything and he, he thought he was at the end of his rope. And so in desperation, he went to see his doctor to see if his doctor could help. And he was amazed at the prescription his doctor gave him. After he examined him, his doctor looked at him and said, I'll tell you what you need to do. A dozen times a day and right before you go to bed at night, I want you to repeat these words. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not lean on your own understanding. Well, the man committed to doing it. And he said after a year, his zest for life had returned. All the things that used to bother him that he couldn't handle, he accepted. He began to trust the Lord and stopped worrying about his problems. And he discovered that when he stopped worrying about his problems and drawing strength from a power beyond himself, he was free to do his best. Trust 
faith. It can transform your life. It can turn around your life. And when you have this kind of faith, you can face any storm, no matter what it is. And let me tell you, it's not just a preacher telling you this. This is found to be true through research. You know, journalist Sarah Jennings sought to find the reason why some people are able to thrive in the midst of crisis and others are not. And so she did all this research to find out the reason why. What is the, what is the common denominator? What is the common element for people who are able to, to live through and thrive through trouble and crisis? And you know what she discovered? Surprise, surprise. It was their faith in God. In particular, she said, those folks she found who were able to thrive in the midst of crisis and cope in the midst of trouble held on to two particular beliefs, that God would sustain them through trouble and God would take their trouble and turn it into something good and useful and productive. But you know, here's the truth. It takes time to develop this kind of foundation. It takes time to develop this kind of trust and faith. And that is why the church, that is why your clergy, your leaders always emphasize spiritual habits, regular church attendance, Bible study, prayer. Because we're trying to make sure your life is built on a solid foundation. So when those winds come, those storms come, you have a foundation on which to stand. You know, so often people will come to me, even church members who haven't seen in a while, haven't worshipped in a while. And they'll say to me, you know, I'm sorry, Pastor Charlie, I haven't been able to worship remotely. Things have been going on. It's been a crazy time. It's been a while. But, you know, I don't, I don't feel very close to God right now. Is there any wonder? And strangers will even come to me. And, and they'll want a crash course in, in spirituality. They want a crash course and a faith in Jesus Christ in 15 minutes. They want a, a foundation to be built in their life in just a couple minutes. And, and it can't be done that way. It takes time to develop. It takes time to develop that foundation. In fact, Jesus would say it in Matthew 7. Therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice is like a wise man who built his house on the rock. The rain came down and the streams rose and the winds blew and beat against that house, yet it did not fall. Why? Because it had been its foundation on the rock. But everyone who hears these words of mine and does not put them into practice is like a foolish man who put his house on sand. The rain came down and the streams rose and the winds blew and beat against that house and it fell with a great crash. Here's the truth. As you face whatever trouble you will face in life, what kind of foundation is your life built upon? And parents, what kind of a foundation are you building for your children? What kind of example are you setting? Is faith and church a priority? Do you exemplify that priority? Whether or not we're in a building, even if it's turning on a remote service, even if it's gathering together in your living room during COVID and having a Bible study. The church is not a building. We are the church as you serve people, as you gather for Bible study, study, as you worship in your own living room, there is the church. What kind of foundation is your life built upon? Because I tell you, the storms will come in your life. Bank on it. And when that phone call comes that rocks your world, when that event happens, that turns your life upside down. You're going to need more than an article you read in a magazine. You're going to need more than that self-help book that you underlined. You're going to need more than something Oprah said. You're going to need Jesus Christ, the only sure foundation. You know, I have a a pastor friend who, who remembers taking his daughter to see Snow White when she was little, 
And she told all her friends about it. My daddy's going to take me to see Snow White. Can't wait. And when some of her friends found out about it, they said, well, you know, there's a wicked witch in that story that's very, very scary. It's very, it's very scary. You're going to be scared. And she responded, no, I won't. Because when that witch appears, I won't look at her. I'll look at my daddy. When you look at this world, when you face trouble, you're not going to find anything that's going to sustain you and help you. The only answer is by looking to Jesus and building your life on his teachings. The only answer is being sure that relationship you have with Jesus is guarding your life, is giving you that foundation that you need. In this world, you will have trouble. But Jesus said, fear not, I have overcome the world. Do you want that foundation in your life when you face trouble? I invite you to pray this prayer with me. Some of you have prayed this prayer or something similar to it before. Maybe for some of you, it's the first time you've prayed it. But pray it silently with me. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, I give my life and my troubles over to you. Forgive me of my sins and fill me with your Holy Spirit. Give me the courage and the strength to face the storms of my life. Calm the raging tempest inside me. Teach me, Lord, once again that you're the only sure foundation. And it's only by building my life on you that I can stand. It's in Christ's name we pray. Amen.